Hi, welcome to XLF video tutorials. In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up a parametric optimization problem in Excel using XLF solvers. In past videos, we have shown how to solve standalone problems such as computing an integral or solving a differential system. In a parametric optimization setup, we go a step further to customize the solution of our problem as we desire. We do that by setting up constraints on the solution and then finding optimal, va optimal values for our problem parameters to satisfy these constraints. In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up a simple parametric problem for a, a triple integral that computes the volume of a cone, as you see here. The volume of a cone can be computed from this simple formula. However, we are going to use the triple integral for demonstration. And our parameters for this problem are the radius and height of the cone. Let's move on to Excel to demonstrate how we can do this. I began by defining named variables for my height as h and my radius as r and my initial guesses for these parameters is 1 and 1. I'm going to compute this triple integral using a nested quad f program and uh, I'm going to use x1, y1 and z1 as my variables of integration. I'm also uh, making use of these stored formulas for the lower and upper limits for some of the integrals. For example, I have defined this as z low, which corresponds to the lower limit on the innermost integral, and I've defined this formula as y low, which corresponds to the lower limit on the middle integral, and also y high, which corresponds to the upper limit on the middle integral. To compute this triple integral, we simply uh, define the innermost integral with respect to z1. My integrand here is 1, so I can just simply pass it since the constant. And I'm passing the limit z low to h. Then I pass this entire integrand, which is in b5, to uh, the middle integral, which is uh, defined in b6. As you can see, the integrand here is b5. And the variable of integration again is y1. And the limits go from y low to y high, which are defined in these formulas. Finally, my outermost integral is with respect to x1 and it takes as integrand b6 the middle integral and uh, the limits are from minus r to r. Computing this integral using the default algorithm, the adaptive default algorithm, computes the value shown here. Now the first question we want to ask is what height is needed for a volume of 1.5? As you can see my volume here is 1.04 and I want to drive this to 1.5 and I'm trying to compute my height. It's uh, a straightforward process. The first step is to define a constraint. And uh, my constraint is the value I obtained with my initial guesses, which is in B7, and uh, minus my target value, which is 1.5. My objective is to drive this constraint to zero. And I do that using the nonlinear solver, NLSolve. So all I, simp all I need to do is simply invoke NLSolve. And my First argument is my constraint in B10, and my second, uh, my second argument is my variable, which is H. I compute NLSolve, it, it iterates, and computes the answer for me in H. It just finished, and uh, it computes the answer shown here. Now I can actually verify the accuracy I obtained relying on the analytical formula for the volume of a cone. And I've in cell D11, I'm just using that formula and I'm replacing the uh, uh, height by the value computed by the uh, solver. And if we compute this value, we see our, we are very pre we're pretty close to the desired target of 1.5. Now one thing to demonstrate here is we are using the default algorithm for the integration, which is an adaptive algorithm, and it can be expensive in this kind of uh, iterative uh, optimization. So we might want to speed up the computation by selecting as a fixed rule integration algorithm. I can do that by using the optional control argument by specifying the algorithm for the outermost integration as QK15, which is a fixed rule integration using 15 points. Now, as you can see, the calculation is much faster, and I can repeat my computation for the optimal parameter h, and it uh, computes in a, almost a second uh, much faster than using the adaptive. 
um, we can see actually by doing this we have lost a little bit of accuracy now we're only accurate to about three decimal places next actually let's uh, try a different example here where we are trying to vary both the height and radius uh, to compute a volume of 1.5 but now we have the additional constraint that the height and radius add up to 3 so I'm going to insert another constraint and it's simply now my height plus radius minus 3 because I want to drive this constraint to 0 next I'm going to run my nonlinear solver again on these constraints I'm going to run this this time as an array formula because I have two variables and I'm going also to use the formatting option so my arguments to the solver are the constraints defined in b10 and b16 notice that I've surrounded them with parentheses because I want to use the union operator in Excel to combine them into one reference and then my my variables are the height and radius next I uh, skip over the third optional parameter or pass zero because we don't have any inequality constraints and then I use the fourth optional argument to specify the formatting option pressing control shift enter and the solver computes the results for us it also shows that we have pretty good convergence uh, the sum of square errors is pretty small and we did this in seven iterations let's verify how well our constraint has been satisfied so we can add both the height and the radius here plus p18 minus 3 and we get uh, pretty close to zero within the tolerances of the solver this is pretty much this process for carrying an optimize uh, parametric optimization in Excel lab you first simulate or solve your system once based on some initial guess for your parameters that you want to vary uh, next you define constraints that basically measure the difference between your obtained result and your target result and the third step is simply to solve for your variables or your parameters by passing these constraints to NL solve you can do this as a simple in this case we have a simple constraint so we can just run NL solve as a simple uh, formula or in this case we have multiple constraints so we need to run NL solve as an array formula this is pretty much all there is to it the system is more complex like in the case of differential equation systems to define constraints require the use of criterion functions I will demonstrate this in upcoming videos uh, thank you for watching